you feel so far at fall camp? Yeah, um, like any fall camp, you know, there's been there's been some ups and downs. There's been days where, you know, we, we look like we should. There's been days where we haven't and we got to get some things corrected, but the group's been really good, um, really been focusing on what the emphasis have been each practice, really trying to master these situations. Uh, the effort has been really, really good. We have not had a lack of effort yet. We haven't had to um, coach that as much as the past. I guess we'll say those kids have taken it upon themselves to, to really run to the football and, and bust their butts, um, continuing to work on the tackling. You know, we were not a good tackling team last year, so we're continuing to push the envelope there, and that's got to continue. But I'm happy with where they're at. Where was it? What about the turnovers too? How are you feeling about that? It's coming along. Yeah, so the, the turnovers, um, we came out really hot. We, we were taking the ball away like crazy early, um, and that's continued. Uh, the first two or three practices um, was really good as far as taking the ball away. And it hasn't it hasn't dropped, um, but it's kind of it's leveled off a little bit. So continuing to emphasize that. But I think the guys have a really good um, you know, football knowledge right now, trying to take that ball away. Tips and overthrows have been have been going our way for the most part. We had one in the scrimmage that didn't, but um, the guys are really, really hunting the ball right now. You may have just touched on it there, but I mean, is there one unit or one area where you feel like you guys have improved the most this that fall from full spring to fall? No, I, I think, you know, it's what we've seen out there, there hasn't been very many mental errors. Um, and that, that's a, a testament to the position coaches and also the, the older group just not allowing that to happen out there. So there there hasn't been a whole lot of, you know, busts where we have to correct things. Not to say that there isn't errors because there's always going to be errors and always things you got to correct, but there hasn't been a whole bunch of mental errors where guys couldn't get a check or guys couldn't um, adjust the coverage on motion. Those, those guys have done a really good job there. So I think that's that's probably the, the thing I've seen that's been the most standout-ish to us on defense. And then, um, you know, we're taking the ball away at a good click as well. What about uh, the pass rush? And I guess in particular, trying to get somebody else other than just Ahmed, you know, from the end spot. Yeah, uh, right now, uh, those guys are rushing really well. It's hard in practice because you can't sack the quarterback. So even, you know, the, the thing that's always tough is like, it looks like a good rush, but can you make that in the game? So we need to see some more. Uh, some more of that, and we've been we've been drilling those guys. And once they get to the once they get to the quarterback and scrambling that dude around, so they have to really work at it. Um, but the the pass rush right now has, has looked really good, both interior and exterior. Marco, you know the first five or six games of last season was maybe the best tackler on this team last year. I mean, what, what did you learn about him last year, and where have you seen him grow the most this year? Yeah, I think the thing you learned about Marco was whether he was the starter or not, he was going to be ready to play. Um, you know, when he got in there, when, when there were some injuries, you know, DJ went down and uh, there was just no drop off. So he was ready to play. He knows what he's doing. He's always lined up. He can get everybody else lined up. And like you said, he's going to be in the right spot and he's going to make tackles. Um, the thing I think Marco has grown a little bit more in here is just kind of being a little position flexible where we can do some more things with him. Last year was primarily, hey, you're going to line up at Mike and that's what you're going to do. But I think Marco's got a pretty good grasp over all the defense right now. What, what did Zion Washington do, and what has he done to kind of, you know, take a, what at least looks like a starting spot to this point? Yeah, Zion's done a great job. Um, you know, Zion's long, he's athletic, um, but he's done a really nice job with his movements. He's he's way better in coverage right now, and once again, he's taken that step where he kind of knew what to do to really understanding where he's supposed to be at in the defense, what his responsibility is on each call, and then not only that, but what can hurt him in each call. Going back to Marco for a second, uh, he really showed his nose for the ball last year with all those tackles. Is that something that's natural and instinctive, or, or can that be learned? Yeah, I think it's both, right? I mean, usually you don't get a guy that doesn't have very good instincts to the ball, and all of a sudden that just pops for him. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of things. You know, I think it's those guys come out of high school, and they probably are pretty good tacklers. They probably have a really good nose for the football. And then once they learn what's happening in the defense and kind of where they can be, to give them a little bit of an advantage, then it really, really starts to happen. You mentioned some of the picks for Lynn Camp. You know, how, how have you seen the competition at uh, in defensive back? You know, I guess a corner kind of kind of start to play out. Yeah, there's there's good competition in that room. Obviously, you know, Marion did a really nice job at the end of last season. Um, Jeremiah Irby's come in, Banks has come in, DT's come back, Markell's come back. So there's a lot of good competition at those at those positions, and there's a lot of guys that I think can go in the football game, and, and we won't. We won't drop at all. Has you have you even seen like Franklin Johnson make some plays? Like who are some young guys maybe just yeah. across the defense the first ten days of fall camp here that have stood out to you? No, Franklin's done a good job. Um, he, he's he always he's a fast dude. He showed up on special teams. 
um, but he's done a really nice job. And there's just a lot of young guys. Max Steej has done a really nice job so far in camp. Jake Ripp's done a really nice job in camp. Um, Lopez Sanusi had a good day today. Um, Tavion Woodard's done a good job in camp. But there's there's just a ton of young guys that are, that are playing at a high level. Yeah, I'm talking to Michael Callahan as well. What, 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 he's just kind of the guy's just been a steady guy, and I'm sure he may have probably got some votes for captain too. I mean, he's just a guy that I'm sure is a leader on and off, and just to have him back this year, um, what, what does he provide to that D-line? Yeah, it's a huge thing because, you know, Mike – Mike has built himself into the player he is. You know, he's he's come a long way, and he what he doesn't have that some of those other guys have, he gains on them by knowing exactly what's going on. He's just a guy, and he can coach those young guys. So if those guys have an issue, he's a great guy. They grab him. He goes and watches film with them. So just to have him back is even when I'm out working with somebody else, he can help those young guys. So it's like having another coach in the room. You've got some experience back in safety. We've talked about some young guys. Zion's seen a lot of snaps. Shea is back. Ty Benefield played really well last year. How, how are you going to parse out those, those snaps this season? Yeah, it's gonna. It's a good problem, um, but it's going to allow us to rotate some. Right now, you got guys, and all those guys are playing a lot of different positions. You know, Tubes can play anywhere, and you got Zion and Ty Benefield and Rodney Robinson and Shea. There's just a, a ton of guys that are out there can take reps, and I feel good about those guys swapping around. If somebody goes down, we can stay in those packages, every single package we have, because those guys, Coach Stock's done a great job of cross-training those guys. So it's, it's, been, it's been a real positive situation. Benefield played a lot last year as a freshman. What, what stood out the most, stood up the most about him last year? Yeah, I think, you know, his just just making plays, you know, even when he didn't know exactly what was going on, he he make, he finds a way to make plays and he's done that in camp. He's had a lot of turnovers already. Um, big long guy, flies to the football. Um, he doesn't have any fear, but and he and we've moved him around too a lot this this spring uh, spring and fall camp. Uh, so he just his knowledge of the game is growing, his knowledge of the system is growing, and he was already a really good football player. So when those two meet, that's a, that's a special thing. How's a guy like Rodney dealing with the guy started here for multiple years, maybe not being the starter this year? Yeah, and Rod's done a great job. Rod's a great teammate. He's he's vocal. Um, doesn't matter which group he goes with. If he's going with the ones or the twos, Rod's the same guy, and he's given everything he's got. And Rod's right in the mix to be in the starting group, and that's, that's going to be an interesting – probably won't know until after scrimmage too – who's going to actually be the starters, but Rod's done an unbelievable job. He's just a great teammate in, in getting everybody going. And it's really nice to have him in there with the twos because he can get those guys lined up if somebody's not sure what they're supposed to do. You mentioned Benefield has kind of uh, moved around a lot of different positions this year. What do you see as his natural position? Is, is he a free safety? Is he a nickel? What, what is his natural position? Yeah, I mean, that's always that's always the natural position. I don't know. Um, you like him at, at field safety because he, he has such big range and he can make plays. But you also like him as a nickel or a dime where he can get closer to the ball and he can blitz and do those kind of things. So it could be a week-to-week -week situation, whether what we need him to do, where he's going to play. How, uh, in a perfect world, how deep would you go on the D-line? And how, do you feel like you have the, the depth that you want to have or need to have? Or? Yeah, I think you, you always have to, in any game, of those front four, you got to have eight. You got to be able to rotate those guys. That's just a different, this is a different world. And you got to be able to, have guys that you feel good where, you know, if it's even if it's Ahmed, right? Ahmed's you got to have a guy where if it's his seventh rep, the next guy in is going to be better than him for one, two, or three, so we can get him a, a break. But when you're playing D line, you're playing as hard as you can. You have to be able to rotate those guys through. So you know you need to be at least two deep at every position. You'd like to be three deep. Do you have that? Or? Yeah, I, right now I know we have we know we have two deep. We're trying to figure out who's those next guys that are getting on the bus. You have so much depth in the interior of the line this year, but Michael Madry is really looked impressive in camp. He looked really impressive this spring. And where has he grown the most in the field? Yeah, he's he's done a nice job, and he looks a lot different than spring. Um, you know, he always had some twitch. He always had a little bit of pass rush, but he's done a really good job of defending the run better. I thought in the spring, you know, you can turn him loose and, and let him go rush the passer, but he didn't play the run as well in the spring. This fall camp, he's really done a nice job of trying to shore that piece of his game up. How has Ahmed looked? I know it's kind of easy to overpass the, the steady guys like him and Andrew and stuff, but I mean, how have kind of some of your leaders they had done this fall? Yeah, Ahmed, you know, it was funny because the, the first couple of days, you know, Ahmed didn't take a lot of reps in the spring trying to get his body back. And the first couple of days, he's like, whew, that didn't feel like me. And then it's steadily just become him again. Uh, but he's done a really good job, too. He plays hard. We all know that. He's got one speed, and he's going to make a lot of production out there. And then I think Coach. Frazier has done a great job with just detailing Ahmed's work. You know, with the he's played a lot of reps at Boise State, but 
in general as a football player, he hasn't had nearly as many reps as a lot of these guys because he didn't play it growing up. So he's still got a lot to learn just detail-wise and what happens post-snap. Uh, so Coach Frazier's done a really good job with him that way. There was, there was a couple of practices ago, you were doing some one-on-one -on -one drill with like D-line, O-line, and I think he got beat or something, but he went and asked the same O-lineman, like, hey, let's get one more rep, let's go again. Let's like, what, what does this say about him or just his, his I guess, competitive nature, but also as, in terms of a leader, like wanting to get right back out there? No, he's, yeah, he's, he doesn't like to lose a rep, you know, and in practice you might lose one every once in a while, but if he can help it, he's going to try to get an extra one. Um, which is what you want. You know, you want those guys that want to pop back up and get it right. Uh, but he's always trying to do that. So, and he wants to stay and work after practice a lot. So he's 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 just a competitor. Jaden Virgin Morgan's a guy who didn't have a sack last year, but I feel like he was a millisecond away from having four or five. What has he done to kind of close that gap this year? Man, I'll tell you what. Even coming off the off season, Jaden looks way different. He's got a different burst about him right now. I think he's up to 250 pounds or plus. You guys probably know more than me, but. Um, Gosh, he looks like a different dude, and he's done a really good job working that edge rush. Um, you know, like I said, he didn't have a whole bunch last year, so we got to see once he gets there if he can actually get that quarterback on the ground. But he's he's done everything that we've asked him to this this spring and the fall. What's more important than what's more important than closing that gap? Is, is it the physical side or is it the mental side? Understanding your pre your pre snap sheet and things like that. No, I think it's. You talking about getting to the quarterback? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's always that piece, and it's hard because you never get to practice that piece. You know, once you get home, it's it's the one the one thing in football where you run, and instead of changing that angle and getting to the quarterback, you have to run past the quarterback, and it's just one thing that you don't get to work on a ton, and that's how it has to be. We only got so many quarterbacks, we can't lose one. Um, but that's a hard skill, and until the real bullets start flying, you can see who can actually, you know, get to the quarterback and get him on the ground. That's just a hard thing to drill, so it's going to come quick. We saw Sheldon move to number nine, and I saw the video where Spencer at, practice, or at the team meeting like pulled it out and gave it to him. Like, what? Uh, I guess just his development and, and his impact this year, but also like, uh, what, what do you think of the single digit for the D lineman there? Uh, I mean, I, I it doesn't. I don't care. I think it looks a little silly sometimes, um, but that's the number the guy wanted, and he did a great job of getting his body to where it needs to be. He was a little out of shape last year coming in, um, but he's done. His footwork is so much better. His body is so much better. He's so much more bursty out there on the field. Uh, he did everything he needed to do, and he wanted that number, and he earned it. So I'm glad Coach Coach gave it to him. And last one I had about the Inferno practice tomorrow. Uh, what? what for, especially for the D line, I guess having to get ready to go down for for the heat and stuff down there. Like, what, I mean, does that actually? How much does it actually help to, to get out there in full pads in the indoor with the Inferno stuff? Yeah, I think I, I don't know, like from a scientific situation, how it helps, but it helps you get acclimated to it. It just kind of shows you what it's going to be like when you're down in the heat and you're down in that humidity. So it's a good thing we do it um, just to show those guys like this is this is a real deal and it's going to be hot and it's going to be sweaty down there. So just to feel it one time, I think is, is good. You don't want it to be the first time you ever feel it to be on game day.